way the points table looked at the end of this World Cup series. Australia with 12 points, New Zealand 11, Great Britain were unlucky to miss out with 10, Papua New Guinea had four, and of course France dropped out midway through the tournament. Gary Jack at fullback, Dale Shearer on one wing, Michael O'Connor on the other, Andrew Farah, Mark Magura the centres, Wally Lewis, Alan Langer, half and five eighth. Now the front row is Paul Dunn, Benny Elias, Steve Roach, Paul Sirinan, Gavin Miller, Wayne Pierce make up the back row and the lock position. And the New Zealand team fullback is Gary Mercer on the wings, Tony Eero and Mark Alaya. The centres are Kevin Eero and Dean Bell. At standoff, uh, half-back or five-eighths as we call it in Australia, Gary Freeman. Scrum half is Clayton Friend. The uh, front row forwards are Peter Brown in eight and Adrian Shelford in ten. Wayne Wallace in the nine jumper. International numbering, the second row is Mark Graham and Kurt Sorensen. And the lock forward is Mark Horro. The reserves, Shane Cooper and Sam Stewart. They're coached by Tony Gordon. And uh, this New Zealand team is well and truly pumped up for what will be a superb game of football, I'm sure. Some of the crowd here at Eden Park. Crowd here at Eden Park as the Kiwis come out. Oh, boy. We thought Lang Park had some atmosphere. <laughs> this is incredible. Bit will be surprised to see Sam Stewart on the bench too in 15, the last man out for the Kiwis, but look at this crowd packed in round the ground and Ray Warren. Two to meet him, Shelford and Graham, Benny Elias, out for Roach. So the big men starting to work early here in Australia. 32 metres out from their line. Paul Dunn takes it up now and some crashing tackles too. From New Zealand, third play from Australia. Elias clears it out. Wasn't a good pass. Wally Lewis couldn't take it. A stumble pack. And listen to the crowd. They love Wally making mistakes here. They won't worry him too much. Drum packed out, 32 metres out from the line. The pack weights, Australia 564, New Zealand 570. Nothing much in it. Incorrect feed. And Clayton Friend. So the first penalty of the match going to Australia. Well, it's a surprise decision. Usually they let the half back beat as he likes. Lewis kicking uh, to touch. Shearer. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a wrestling match, push and shove, nothing in that. Benny Elias at dummy half, holds the ball up and gets it out for a done. 
Benny Elias, look at Surinam though with a cut out pass that went on to Roach, a big high swinging arm, Elias now clears it out, here's McGaw, McGaw winds up, he's wrapped up, they're wrestling with him, can't get the big man down though, Elias on to Gavin Miller, Miller only makes four and five and Shelford uh, wrestles with him, shoves him around, tough stuff from the Kiwis and he's plenty big and plenty tough too, Shelford I'll tell you, but Australia want to run the ball with Farrah, Midway between the half and the quarter now, the Green and Dolls. Lewis puts the ball in the air. The chases are pouring through. Langer is up there. Bouncing ball. Chance for Australia. And it goes through the back door. Fumbled, though. Taken by the Kiwis. Mark Porro. The luck was the man who uh, fell off the ball, but he was offside. So that'll force the scrum deep in the 22 be a shot for a goal so uh, my misunderstanding of the signal there it's a shot for goal they're questioning it too Mark Graham having a little bit to say but Mr Anui says no there will be a shot for goal Michael O'Connor will take that he was knocked the ball forward another Kiwi player picked it up in an all five side position O'Connor moves into it there it is Two points, Australia lead this World Cup decider. Two points to nil over New Zealand. Just four minutes of play, and already Australia has some points on the board. That won't be the start the Kiwis wanted. Peter Brown, the front row will kick off, and uh, a lone Aussie flag up there. Brown restarts play. Gary Jack has it covered. Brings it back to the 22 line with some big defence too and uh, plenty of defence as they wrap him down just short of the 22 line now. Benny Elias looks for Siren and Siren and winds up all oh, and some big stuff. <laughs> you think it's not tough out here? Roach. Look at this Kiwi defence. Two and three tacklers every time a green and gold player moves. Lewis wrapped up early, shelf it over the top and belts him down. Elias, back for the kick, Andrew Farah stabs one away. Mercer, the fullback for the Kiwis, takes it nicely. Taken though nicely too by McGaw. Run around movement now as they try to win up it, but uh, Ilya has uh, put the ball down, Australia's regathered. And they're almost at the 22, so a good position here for Australia, but now they fumble the football. Well, Ray Warren, some uh, stop-start stuff at the moment, but look at Benny. He's diving around and makes two or three. Yes, and that marker defence from New Zealand, I think referee Arnu is going to have to have a close look at it. A penalty goes to Australia. They lead 2-0. Now they've got another shot for goal about 30 metres out and almost in front, so it's a chance for them to go to four points to nil. But what he's not doing, he's not keeping his markers immediately behind one another. And, of course, the NZers are getting out and they're nullifying whatever plays we've got off our first receiver. So... I hope he puts more attention into that facet of uh, his refereeing in the not too distant future. So Connor from about 30 metres out, right in front. Australia leading by two points to nil. Michael O'Connor of the Australians, the only one to have played at Eden Park what memories he would have of his play with the rugby side. His kick is very, very good. Straight over the dot, straight between the tall sticks. And Australia leads New Zealand four points to nil. Finally, Australia leading four points to nil as Lewis kicks and Mercer it is, who's wrapped up by the green and gold defence. Midway 22 halfway on the Kiwis into the ground. This is Kevin Eero, the centre. Big lump of the lad, pulled down by Andrew Farrow, playing in the green and gold for the first time today. Played back and swung away by Wallace to Graham. Graham is met by the Australian Reception Committee and forced down there by Siren and wearing the number 11, Roach in 10. As it goes away now to Horro, the lock forward, he's put it down. Elias tried to pick it up, but the referee is ruling knock on against New Zealand. And the scrum will pack down about seven or eight metres on the Kiwi side of halfway. Two penalty goals for Michael O'Connor and Australia leading by four points to nil, a very, a very cheap start really for the Australians to come out in front uh, by four points to nil off those two penalties given within easy kicking range. Another scrum penalty, 
Another scrum penalty has been given, and he's got the hooker for being down in the scrum. And uh, Wally Lewis, with the differential penalty, is going to kick the touch. Finds the line just inside the 22. Tap to be taken by Elias. This is Langer and now Roach and back to Langer and back to Lewis. They come with a blindside play. Lewis gets it away to Pierce. Pierce to Langer. Langer goes in to score for Australia. And Australia lead by eight points to nil in the World Cup decider. Well, that was a rehearsed play. It was a blindside play. Involving Blocker Roach and Alan Langer, then to Lewis, who works the blind. This is the climax of a fantastic play by Australia, with little Alan Langer darting in to score the first try Australian try ever scored at Eden Park. Here was the play in total. That was a great play. This every pass found his man. He just cut it up from a tap penalty, and he just walked it in Langer. Well, that was a sensational tap penalty. It couldn't have come off any better for coach Don Ferner, who would be sitting back there, I would imagine, with a smile on his face like a split watermelon. And the attempted conversion being taken by Michael O'Connor, his third kick for the afternoon, and three very easy kicks, and he gets this one, so he converts the try, and Australia lead by 10 points to nil over New Zealand. Alan Langer on camera, the try scorer. Well, Mick Cronin sitting down there on the sideline, a dream start for Australia. Well, a great start for Australia. As it's been game for going 10 minutes, and New Zealand just about to kick off for the fourth time, the position they wouldn't like themselves to be in. But the twice, two opportunities they've had the, with the ball, they've dropped it on the fourth tackle, and the first time they dropped it on the second tackle. Paul Sirena now back to Elias, comes on to Pierce. for oh, some heavy stuff on Pierce too. He just tucks the shoulder in and takes it. Elias, dummy half, gets it on to Roach. Big Roach pretty keen to get him east. Up, down too. Steve Roach hits the ground here and it shakes. Back for the clearer from Farrah. Drives for the line and finds it with a beautiful kick, Andrew Farrah. Lovely kick from centre field. Takes play 32 metres out from the Kiwi line. So Australia, a lion's share of the possession and territory at the moment. Fields for the Kiwis takes it two onto Freeman. He's wrapped up by Lewis though, ball and all. Clayton Friend with a little darting run. He makes two or three, but in they come and belt him down too. And this Australian side fired up. If anything, all of the publicity that's happened in Auckland City this week, and there's been plenty of it as Horro has a slip and gets up again, I think would have motivated the Australians. Jack Gibson? Well, it's a little old occasion there with friend and Elias but we get to find out what New Zealand can do because they haven't had possession for more than a minute in the whole game the penalty this time goes to uh, the Kiwis well, I thought that was a bad decision friend started that appeal Brown the uh, pop the kick for touch and it'll take play midway between the half and the quarter Australia's end of the ground Wallace the hooker takes the tap here's Shelford Hard run bounces out of one, but they come back and get in. Some tough stuff in the centre. Brown takes it up. The big men, the Kiwis, are running it up now, and they're almost to the 22. Back it comes to Friend. Quickly out to Friend. He sees a little gap. Closes quickly, though. And they really haven't made too much ground as an Australian player down has not moved. Touch judges in. Will come on with a play at the moment because it comes out now to Dean Bell. Dean Bell winds up and gets it to Tony Hero. Hero inside the 22 and the crowd go up. Mark McGaw getting treatment up on his knee now. He was clobbered in black uh, in back play. It was, it was pretty heavy stuff and I I think you'll find Kurt Sorensen was one of the New Zealanders. There were two involved and McGaw just didn't move. Well, it didn't he really hit the ground and just uh, stayed there. It was a cheap shot, let me tell you. Well, the sponge being applied to uh, Mark McGraw's spot, as you can see. Graham and Nui has heard the report. Penalty has gone to Australia. It was Sorensen for sure. Sorensen getting called out. Peter Wynn might remember this guy. 
He probably know how Mark McGraw feels. McGraw back on his feet now and walking back into position as Lewis kicks for touch. And that's another excellent kick from Lewis to 32 metres out. They'll restart play. Shearer flicks it back inside, takes the ball now on the run. Oh, and there's another high one from Wallace as he's underneath that one. Elias. On the ropes, the Kiwis will have to settle this. They've got to get down and put their heads down and play some football. Look at Elias, though, inside the danger zone for the Kiwis, inside the 22. Touch judges in again. Play goes on, though. Lewis, Lewis, there's some high stuff going on. They belt him down two and three. Graham and Lewis right over the top of it. There's the touch judge with his flag up, still standing there. And now uh, Mr. Anui's going over for the report. This is Sorensen and Roach, I'd say, Daryl, and you'll find there could be some headbutting reported here. Well, a fiery start from the Kiwis. The Australians are settling down to play football. That's what they want to do. And they're doing it pretty well at the moment. Ten points to nil. Thursday here at this very ground that he was worrying about the rucks. Big Steve Roach with a smile on his face. He's having a talk with both captains at the moment, saying settle it down, let's play some football. The penalty goes to the Kiwis this time. Brown again kicking for touch. Still in their own half. By 10 metres, the Kiwis. Tony Hero. Gives it on to Wallace, the penalties at the moment, Australia 5, New Zealand 2. A bit more push and shove with Shelford and Roach and a bit of a chop there too, so there's no love lost between those two, the big men. Graham Lewis gets a good pass to Sorensen, and Sorensen winds up and the defence comes and gets him. Gary Jack and Sewerton uh, there, plenty of swinging arms though all the time. Freeman gets it out to Horro. Horro though, brought down, flicks the ball out, trying to stay in touch. Ball still in play, Dean Bell takes it up for the Kiwis running across the field trying to link up tries to step but can't Freeman Shelford there's a Kiwi player down as well waving Australia back and giving the penalty to uh, New Zealand well that was a surprise the first five yard of the game the Kiwi down in back play there his little fog rolled in around him Mark Graham it's Mark Graham yes another penalty taken by the front rower Peter Brown there's a bit of a story with this fellow he in fact was quite for him although this breeze will be gusting across the, the the flight of the ball it was a beautiful pass by the way that Graham got to Sorensen to open the Australians up for the first time in the match as Brown takes the attempted penalty it's getting away uh, it's bounced on its point and come back into the field of play but Gary Jack was alert and he's beaten the tackle from Tony Iro and eventually is uh, wrapped up by Freeman and the lock forward Horro. It's the dummy half Michael O'Connor losing the ball. Wallace gets it away to Eero and the wing three quarter, 21 years of age, playing in his first international, is brought down 12 metres out from the green and gold line. Right back by Benny Elias that would restart the tackle count. He's doing that to referee and now it's dummy half Eero away now through friend and gone to Freeman. He fades across the ground. He picks up Shelford. Shelford goes further across the park. Gets a ball to Mercer. Mercer's still going. Ten metres out from the line. And the Kiwi fullback is pulled down. He plays it back to front rower Shelford. Away to friend and now to Sorensen. Sorensen is away from Elias. He's gone to Langer. Langer takes him. Good tackle by the little Queenslander. Head on. Played by Sorensen. Mercer dummy half to Shelford with the football. He's tackled nine metres from the Australian line. Australia leading ten points to nil from Friend that's gone to Freeman. Freeman away to Graham. Graham throws the dummy, stands in the tackle of Langer, loses the ball. McCaw gets it to Benny Elias. And Elias is put to ground by Kevin Eero, the centre three quarter. Elias will get up and play the ball back now for O'Connor to take it out from dummy half again. Pull down by the lock, Horro. Across now to the right for Roach. And Roach and Surinan have taken it out 
willingly and often uh, from this zone of play which Australia thankfully hasn't seen much of in this match so far. New Zealand have given away a lot of penalties and that has played into the Aussies' hands. With the breeze in the first half, Farrah, probably the most accurate kicker in the game. I'm talking about kicking in general play and gee, Australia's blessed in that department with Elias and Miller and Lewis and Farrah. But of the four, my money would be for Andrew Farrah for accuracy. Mercer will play it back inside his own quarter, played back to Tony Eero. And he takes it towards the centre of the park, but he's pulled down by Dunn, wearing the number eight, and Rope wearing ten. In there was Gavin Miller. Wallace dummy half. He, he dummies to Brown. It's gone through Friend to Shelford. And the New Zealanders prepared to spread the ball on an early tackle. Friend from dummy half. And knocked on by Captain Dean Bell. So a scrum will go down. It'll be an Australian loose head, an Australian feed to this scrum just 25 metres out on the north stand side of Eden Park. Australia 10, New Zealand yet to score. Won by the green and golds to Lewis. And Lewis is put down by Freeman, and also getting out of the scrum quickly was horrible. Lewis, getting to his feet rather slowly, Lang is the dummy half. The ball is in the hands of Farrah. Australia centres, uh, huge young men with uh, Andrew Farrah and Mark McGaw, the centres for this test. And now it's on the 22 line, on the Kiwi end of the ground. A chance here for Australia. Elias to Langer, and cuts out Lewis, picks up Pierce. Pierce goes for the break, and uh, players go left, right, and centre. But uh, it's Pierce who comes up and plays the ball to Elias. Roach goes ahead, turns it inside for Siren and his Balmain teammate. But he's lost the ball, Paul Siren. And New Zealand come up with the ball, played by Wallace. Away now to Clayton Friend, across to Mark Graham. Out wide for Mark Elia, destined for Canterbury Bankstown. And he's beautifully grasped over there on the far side of the ground by Andrew Farrow. Coming away with it as Eero. The ball has been lost. It came off the arm of uh, Gavin Miller. Been propelled forward to the referee. Ruling a scrum to go down deep into New Zealand too. Well, that was a good decision for Australia. They knocked that ball back. I thought it was sixth place to go in favour of the Kiwi. Okay, this scrum to pack now. From 30 metres out from the Kiwi line. Lang at a feet for Australia. Goes with a feed, crowd don't like it. Shearer. Centre field. Australia has the option. Lewis. Well, bad one for Jack, but he picked it up well. Flicks one out for Langer. They pile on the little man. Elias. Roach. Roach. Langer. Langer. Langer on the move. The little crease and a put to Chip Drew. Oh, we've seen him do it so many times. It's state of origin football. Doesn't quite come off though. Mercer got it. But a good try from little Alan Langer. Well, plenty of pressure on the Kiwis. Surviving that one. Creative play from Alan Langer. He had a look. He had a little gap. Put the little chip through. Driven out by Brown now. High ball. Almost back to the halfway line. Gary Jack takes it. Has McGaw in support. 32 metres out now again from the Kiwi line. Elias gets it onto Siren and Siren and winds up the big man. They come over the top of Wallace. Hitting him with everything he can as he goes down. Roach. Gee. Australia's uh, big pack. Have really been trying hard. Wally Lewis has come to the sideline. He's getting some attention there. But Elias now shows the ball, winds up Graham over the top. There's Wally Lewis getting some treatment to a hand. A, a forearm it is, he's getting bandaged, but we'll stay with the players. Andrew Farrow winds up. They get him. Final tackle for Australia. They're in the centre of the ground inside the 22. Elias has a shot for a field goal. Yes, sir. So they're building points, Australia. Elias had a look then, and the option was a field goal, and he had plenty of time to do it as well. Lewis coming back onto the onto the park now with a bandage on the forearm. Here it is. Dead set in front. Beautiful kick from Benny Elias. So the Kiwis now. Here's another shot of it. Elias just dropping the ball and going right over the dot. Scoreboard hasn't changed here on the ground as yet. But Australia building some points. Well, well Mick Cronin, Australia doing everything right. Do you think that the Kiwis probably come out too tough early? 
I think all Australia's got to concentrate now on playing football. We've seen a few indiscretions come into the Kiwi side after Australia got that 10-point lead. So Australia just concentrate on their football. I think they can win this game from here. As for Wally Lewis's arm, I think if you notice the last time he went to dummy half, he threw that bad pass. I think he's a bit worried about it. Thanks, Vic. Right in the action there on the sideline here at Eaton Park, Australia with a football. Elias gets it on to Pierce. Pierce winds up, almost makes a half break. Just waiting now as Australia regroup. Elias puts the ball in the air. Mercer's got to chase across the field to get it. Takes it. Just manages to stay in the, uh, the field of play as he brings it back, but the Australian chasers are there. Magor and Shearer are the chasers. This is Ilya. Can't go anywhere. Too much defence in green and gold. They take him back a couple of metres. Mercer trying everything for this defence of Australia. Eager, keen, hungry. Anything in the black and white jumper, they thump down, and here's the fan that they want. Big Shelford. He can really motor, as Ray Warren said, once he gets wound up. Friend. Flicks one out for uh, Mark Graham, but look at the defence from McGorry. Just went bang and thumped him down. The Kiwis now with a little half break. This is Freeman. Up and he makes a bit of a break. Freeman, oh, Dean Bell can't take it. Shearer gets on the ball and turns defence into attack. Well, Freeman made the break. Dean Bell couldn't take the ball. The Kiwi skipper putting it down. It's the second time he's dropped the ball this afternoon. Critical stages two. Australia now back on the 22. Rough stuff in the rucks. Roach turns it back to Serenin and Serenin takes the tie. Oh, and now they come back with some high stuff and wrestling down. The Balmain Giant, huge man, centre field. Out it comes to Langer. Long, hard pass. Comes back to uh, from Junior Pierce on the Gary Jack. He can't handle it. Australian player falls on it, but that'll force a scrum. Australia 11, New Zealand yet to score, this scrum going down on the Kiwi 22 or just inside it. Wally Lewis with that heavily bandaged right forearm. There must be a question mark on just how much longer he'll continue in the game as New Zealand win the scrum and the 5'8s were almost shaking hands when that scrum went down. Freeman is tackled by Jack coming over the top and Wayne Pierce broke from his scrum very quickly to make the initial tackle and Pierce is injured as Bell makes a half break for New Zealand. He takes it into some space midway between the 22 and halfway on his own end of the ground. It's Wallace feeding Brown the front row forward. He goes ahead. Lewis got a touch. The tackle count should have been nullified by the referee but it wasn't and Sorensen will play the ball eight metres on his side of the halfway from Wallace to Shelford. Shelford a willing worker but the Kiwis are tending to go up particularly in the forward exchanges, one out. A run around now as Friend works with Wallace and the ball goes to Freeman. Freeman gets a ball away back to Friend and then it's across the back of the ruck to Sorensen. Sorensen draws and gets it to Kevin Eero and Eero is tackled, not Hill, gets up, goes again but is pulled down by Andrew Farrah with the help of Mike O'Connor. This is five tackles but really the tackle count should have only been on number three right now as Sorensen puts the kick up off the left foot. Jack is underneath it. Graham's on side, makes the tackle on Jack and thumps the Australian fullback into the turf of Eden Park. Played now, and it's with Elias giving it to Pierce, and Pierce is tackled, put down by Wallace, the hooker, who plays a bit of second row football here domestically, and now it's Gavin Miller wearing the number 12 in the second row with Paul Sirenen today. And Gavin will play the ball just outside the 32-metre line. 11-0 in favour of Australia in the 4X World Cup decider here at Auckland's Eden Park. The ball being played by Blocker Roach. From Elias, it's gone wide to Langer, wide to Lewis. Lewis kicks. It's a high ball going down to bounce on the New Zealand 22. Takes a left-hand turn. Oh, great kick by Lewis. Magnificent kick by the uh, Australian skipper. Bounced on its point, did a left-hand turn, and crossed the line on the 22 New Zealand's end of the park. Well, this referee's back to the field as far as the five-metre rule is concerned. He's given, given one penalty. I don't think there's been a play than he either team has been in front of them. New Zealand winning the scrum. This is Clayton Friend turning to offer the ball on the inside to Freeman, but then holding it up. Freeman to dummy half. 
It's with Eero the centre, and now it's with Mercer the fullback. Lewis had to go in and make that tackle with one arm. I don't know whether that came up clearly on camera, but he went in to make the tackle. He only used his left arm. There must be a chance that Terry Lamb will be coming into this match, and certainly in the second half. Sirenen making that tackle there jointly with Ben Elias, but a knock-on has been ordered and a scrum will pack down on the Kiwi 22. A try was scored by Alan Langer for Australia and converted by Mike O'Connor, who previously had kicked two penalty goals. If you've just joined us around Australia on the Nine Network, the World Cup final going live into Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth, and of course to Adelaide. And uh, it's uh, refreshing to know that we're going live into those states uh, with this big rugby league international. As it's fed by Alan Langer, the little Queenslander, he tries to scurry under the defence, but he's unable to do so. He'll play the ball 20 metres out from the Kiwi line. The dummy half is done. It's gone wildly out there to be picked up by Jack. And again, Wally Lewis didn't seem to be keen to pick it up. And there's no question in my mind he's having a lot of trouble getting some feeling in that lower forearm, the right forearm. The ball to be played when Pierce plays it. Only 18 metres out. Centre ground. Elias to the left to Gavin Miller. Fades for Siren and Still going, Miller. Miller pulled down eventually by the centre. Eero. A little bit of a scuffle up between McGaw and Freeman in the back. They go the blind and Roach. Roach is pulled down by Freeman. And he'll play the ball. Brown came in to assist in the tackle. Or Graham it was. It's gone to the right. And this is Langer stepping and running back into the traffic. And that's five tackles gone for the Aussies. And this is the chance that uh, Wally Lewis has been waiting for with the kick he feigned, uh, feigned the kick gave it to Benny Elias who puts it up a good one it's gone up high came off Farazan it's gone back to Elias but a penalty a penalty to New Zealand he drilled Farah in front of the kicker and so New Zealand take a quick tap penalty New Zealand now centre field inside their 22 and they've had plenty of pressure with a capital P really a lot of pressure on the black and whites and uh, Mr Anui comes in the play the ball situation there and gives the Kiwis the penalty so they've got a chance to get out of that area and get back into Australian territory just over the halfway line they kick finds the mark Tony Hero now oh well he's, he's taken the tap and he's lost the ball it's given it back to the Australians O'Connor oh and Hero comes hard and high from behind O'Connor's okay though Siren and dummy half gets it on to Dunn Dunn puts his head down and just takes play into the New Zealand territory Roach, she's been involved, Roach. So is Sirenen. The whole pack willing to work for Australia. Out of cuts for Lewis, and he's definitely heard Lewis. He just can't use that arm. He won't be back in the second half. You can almost guarantee that. Gary Jack, Gary Jack with a break, though, and good defence from Tony Hero. He gets him. He's done some work to Winger. Comes out to Langer. Langer centre field. Looks for Lewis. He knows Lewis is hurt. Holds the ball. Benny Elias in for dummy half. He puts the ball in the air. A very high kick. Mercer underneath it. Elias coming through. He takes him though without the ball. And the referee says yes. Right underneath it. But Elias took the man out. And the Kiwis said uh, there's obviously been some back chat. So uh, Mr. Nui has brought him up another 10. So now they get a chance. This is Elia. Elia out of two. He flicks one back for Brown. Brown winds up. The defence is there, he still gets the ball away there to Wallace. Now it goes on to Clayton Finn. Halfway the Kiwis are at the moment. Finn's still going. Starting and running with his no support for him. Well, some great play from the Kiwis. They're keeping it alive. They need to score and do it quickly. Freeman now. Freeman! Freeman with a little break and he can leak up. Gary Jack gets him on a great tackle and belts him down. Dean Bell, dummy half. That's a friend on the Sorensen. Sorensen turns it back inside for Mark Graham. He gets it on the shelf, but here's the ball. Here's the ball. Another great tackle from Gary Jack. Ten metres out, they pull him down. The Kiwis raining away now. And the crowd not happy about that. Well, the crowd not happy about that. There's a sin bin being ruled. Five minutes from this to Anui. We'll see who's coming off because the ball at the moment has gone out to Tony Euro. And they're only ten minutes out. Paul Dunn, Paul Dunn five minutes but will stay with the play at the moment because Sorensen is only eight metres out. The Kiwis hungry for a try, hungry for points. The ball goes loose. Lewis takes the ball, he's got a bit to say to. First has got Lewis. It's on here, there's a bit of push and shove. They'll have to stop it pretty quick. Soon and pulling players away. Sorensen involved with Lewis. 
The penalty's gone to New Zealand. The Wallies have a fair bit to say, Ray, for the last five or ten minutes of this match. He certainly has that, Daryl, but gee, I'll tell you what, it was a good time to have something to say. He's just slowed it down long enough to get us into a defensive, organised pattern. I think Wallace got a small bang in his bonnet. Okay, Peter Brown now. Taking the tap. Winds up the big man. Still eight metres out the Kiwis. Wallace goes, goes to dummy half. Oh, and there's plenty going on. I'm telling you around the rucks. Plenty going on. Here's Sorensen. He winds up. Slips the ball out to Mark Graham. Mark Graham going forward, but Gary Jack is there. So is Elias. Now they start to throw it out to Freeman. Freeman looks for Dean Bell. Dean Bell sees a little grab. Dean Bell gets a loose ball out. Oh, they just can't take it. Australia come up with it. Oh, and the close one for Australia there. Couldn't take the ball. It was on the boot laces. Barrow for Australia takes it back. This ball, ball game at a fierce pace at the moment. But they're on the 22 line, so Australia with the pressure off at the moment. The Syrian winds up. Goes to Pierce. Pierce on to Jack. Gary Jack. Gary Jack. Out through one. Gary Jack. But there's no one there. He's got to take the tackle. But they're back into New Zealand's half. Out it comes to Langer. Langer to Lewis. Lewis really well. You can see it there. He can hardly throw the ball. But here's Mark McGaw. Turns it back to O'Connor. They get it on to Shearer. Shearer stepping. Here's Langer. Langer with a chance if he can step the line. And Langer heads for the corner. And what about that? Langer's done it again with a great try. Beautiful work from Australia. They stood him up. They stood round him. Got it on to Langer. And he just put over in the corner. Well, watch this. This is Langer his best. The little step. First has got no answer to him, the little man's over for cry number two. Langer certainly come from a long way back to pick this up. McGaw to get a fine inside shot there from Connor, which he stopped one on the way through. Shearer done his work. Back to Langer, put a little move on that fullback, and then he wins. Oh, he's a magic player. Look at this. Langer here now. Here's another angle for you. Got it on to Lewis. You can see he can hardly throw the ball, Lewis. On to Shearer. Then McGaw turned it back inside to O'Connor. Shearer again. Beating men time after time. And look at the step from the little man. Just headed for the corner. Mercer had no answer to Langer that time. Well, this shot for gold now. About a metre in from the 22 and half a metre in from the touch. A very, very difficult angle. The wind will be blowing across this. 15 to nil. Shell shock the Kiwis. Michael O'Connor taking plenty of time about it. Little shake of the head as he gets set. Beautiful kick of the ball, this fellow. There it goes. Well, it certainly had the height, but the wind's got it and carried it away. So the score remains Australia 15, New Zealand nil. And that's being played before a capacity crowd here at Eden Park. Around 50,000 people. Wally Lewis is coming from the field. Wally Lewis is off the field. I would suspect a fracture of that uh, right forearm. He's been playing very bravely and playing just with the one arm for the last 10 minutes and Terry Lamb has taken the field for a stroke. This is Mike O'Connor now. O'Connor put down by Shelford inside the Australian quarterway line. They're back to Elias. This is done. And uh, the big Canterbury prop is put down. Three big men have done very well for Australia. They're the ones that we probably were thinking mightn't uh, have a lot of petrol in the tank with uh, the layoff period. But Roach and Sirenan and Dunn, here's Sirenan now. Going out to a point just midway between the 22 and halfway. And he's straight into the paddock. It's uh, Gavin Miller who goes away from dummy half. Good thinking and good play really for Australia. Just a few little dummy half runs in your own territory and then clearing it with the big kick. And here's Farrow doing that now. Oh, Farrow took one very high after he got the kick in. The touch judges come in too. I should think so. It'll be a penalty to Australia where the ball landed 
but there could also be uh, further repercussions as Dr. Bill Mon Monaghan has a look at uh, Wally Lewis. There's the, the, the tackle, the hit by Clayton Friend, the number seven for New Zealand. He took care of Andrew Farrah, who's on his feet. He's quite okay. Now, he's given the penalty where Farrah was decked. Now, that's an incorrect ruling by Arnui. The penalty should be given where the ball lands, and it should have been given about 25 metres up the ground. So he's made a mistake there, the Papua New Guinea referee, Mr. Graham Arnui. However, the good news is that Farrah is quite OK. And Benny Elias will take the tap, 32 metres out from the Kiwi line, through Langer to Lamb, and this is uh, Magor. And Magor is not held, tries to go again, but Freeman puts him down. Penalties, 8-6 in favour of uh, New Zealand. Long ball picked up by Surinan. Fends off with one arm as he looks to protect himself and carry the ball with the other. Play just outside the quarterway line. Dummy half is done. He's back on the field. A long ball from Langer. This is Lamb. A cutout pass for Farrah. Jack is coming in. They've got the extras. And uh, Elia had two on one there. He had a tickly situation. The New Zealand wing three quarter. But it's coming back to the left now. And Gavin Miller. Miller's run through a big gap. And Miller. Miller goes all the way. He beats the New Zealand fullback. Mercer and scores adjacent to the upright. Well, Gavin Miller's been toiling hard, and that was uh, all Gavin Miller. It's a happy Wally Lewis and Don Ferner. They can uh, almost smell the prize money at this point in time. With Australia going in, Langer two tries, and now Gavin Miller picks up a touchdown adjacent to the post. Well, this was all but a one out affair. He saw some space and went for it. But the big play there was Pierce. Pierce put a little decoy in for him and just give him the extra three or four yards he picked up necessary to cross the line. Great play from Miller. So Gavin Miller joins Alan Langer amongst our try scorers. Langer has scored a duo. And now Gavin Miller has scored a try for Australia. He's been to England playing in the early part of their season. And he travelled back, in fact, uh, with Steve Roach to be a member of this, uh, this squad as Mike O'Connor prepares to take conversion attempt from very close proximity but the very strong breeze blowing from the northeast just delays the attempt at conversion this is an australia lead by 21 points to nil australia 21 it's been a marvelous performance by the green and golds there were people uh, who really thought australia had no hope at all in this match today and uh, we had some smart aleck comments passed to us like i hope you've brought your handkerchiefs and all the rest of it they were really cocky and supremely confident as you watch another angle on the Miller try. Pierce made the try possible. Elias pumping up. Johnny Ferner looking pretty solemn. I don't know why he'd be pretty happy. 21 nil. Wayne Pierce. They were the Kiwis and the, they must surely come up with more possession. But Freeman is an individual, as a player. He's lost the necessary discipline required to win. And the team's followed. I blame him for a lot. Out they come and the home crowd give them a big roar. 21 to nil. And there's the siren. Play kicks off. In fact, Mick Cronin is on the sideline now with the injured Wally Lewis. Yeah, happy to see Wally. Wally was a bit of bad luck. Broken arm. Yeah, Mick, I did it uh, early in the piece there. I uh, just popped a, a, a bloke's head in my, in my forearm in a tackle and uh, I, I thought I busted it. I, I didn't really know until I tried to pass the ball and it rolled along the ground. I was pretty sure then. Well, I, I saw that pass. It wasn't one of your better ones, but <laughs> it's probably an excuse for it. Uh, you must be happy with the way the game's going. Yeah, mate, I, I'm very happy the way it's going at the moment. The guys have uh, played extremely well, the plan. We knew that the, uh, the Kiwis were going to uh, be very aggressive towards us, and our plan was just to, to be very simple, not to really aggravate them, and uh, just try and play the game uh, with the minimum amount of mistakes we could. I think it's been the key to Australia's success today. They've come out trying to intimidate a few late tackles, whereas Australia stuck to their plan to play football. That's right, mate. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't want to give away any penalties. Every time we, uh, we have the ball in, uh, in attack, we just yell out no-drop ball. We want to work it out of our own half and then play a good kicking game. And when they've got the ball, we just keep screaming out no penalties. And uh, it's a lot easier if you're not getting penalised all day. Well, it is. The referee, I think he has let a bit go today, but with the score of 21, I suppose you're very happy. We are very, uh, very happy the way it's going, uh, Crow. It's, uh, it's a great start for us. And I mean, if we lose it from here, we really need uh, a good kick in the backside. Uh, and if we're any sort of football team, we shouldn't. Well, I don't think you'll lose from here, Wally. I'll let you sit down and enjoy the game in as least pain as possible. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Mick Cronin and Wally Lewis for his time too. A broken arm with rotten luck. Terribly rotten luck for the Australian skipper. Right, play now deep inside the Kiwi. 22, Lang of the feed, two tries in the first half. Referee not happy with it though, he calls it back. 
as Brian said, with the uh, Peter Sterling not playing at the moment. Both the Australians in safe hands. Lamb gets it out to Gary Jack. Gary Jack fought down though with some good defence. Centre field though. Lamb winds up Farah. 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 Farah still going. Farah. Then they get him about eight metres out. Australia going on with the job here. Comes out to Pierce. Oh, good pass out here. And they're in Australia. Farah. That's Shearer. Shearer's gone over the corner. Shearer over the corner. And that was just good play from Australia. They just took it to the centre of the field and they brought it back. Dale Shearer back in the big time after a broken jaw. Gavin Miller got the pass on. Now look at Shearer. Shearer just stood him up and went in in the corner. Well, something like the last combination was, was Miller and Pierce. And this ball back of the Kiwis, he came up short defence a little. But they had possession early and they lost it. Australia come up on a scrum and they're in. They fought through that early possession, the Kiwis which led to this try. Dale Shearer would be just delighted to be back playing in the green and gold and scoring a try. Michael O'Connor now with another difficult uh, attempt virtually on the, uh, the junction of the 22 and the touch. 25 nil. What a whitewashing by the Aussies at the moment. That's a horror. That is a dreadful kick. We'll be real happy to forget that one. Great. Right? Yes, Mike O'Connor is somewhat of a Graham R. Newey has the problem now of sorting out this skirmish that uh, took place between mainly Sorensen and Sirenen. And, uh, of course, uh, Friend was involved with Benny Elias. In fact, Friend had a couple of goes at uh, two players. And uh, he's been sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes so Clayton friend 10 minutes in the sin bin and really he probably can think that he's got off light Jack Gibson because he's been throwing plenty of uh, plenty of fistics around here at the park this afternoon well the incident would have died but he resurrected it he lit the fire he came in three or four meters from punches he was going to solve the Kiwi's problem by a punch at least you've got to think about that for the next 10 minutes O'Connor plays it, Elias to Langer, and now it's Roach. Roach met by the Kiwis, and Sorensen and Shelford, two of the players prominent in defence with Brown. Langer, Dunn, Shelford in number 10, and Horro in 13, Freeman coming in late. Elias switching the point of the attack through Langer and Lamb, and now this is McGaw. McGaw doing some light stepping, and he's finding a passage. Makes a gain of about seven or eight metres before Bell and Freeman come in to put McGaw on the ground. I knew he's standing over the top of the action. Telling them to get off him as Elias works it to Langer. Now it's with Lamb. Lamb goes to the gap. Gets a one-hander back there for Roach. Backing up. And Roach will play the ball on tackle number five. Only half Alan Langer. He has scored two tries. This man has scored one Miller. He flicks it out the back. It's gone from Shearer. And it's with Pierce. I thought one of the Kiwis actually got a touch to the ball and I was expecting the tackle count to be nullified but I knew he felt that it uh, didn't occur as I saw it and uh, he's given the turnover now the turnover instruction in New Zealand with uh, Elia tackled in the centre of the ground about 35 metres out not quite that from his own line and so the crowd urges the New Zealanders to do something uh, to relieve this embarrassing situation this embarrassing scoreline of 25 points to nil Shelford goes ahead, met by Gavin Miller, who's been toiling, as I said earlier, uh, for the Australian side in both attack and defence. Graham standing, looking to offload, but he's pulled down eventually by Wayne Pearce and Benny Elias. To the right from Wallace and then to Brown. Brown puts in a, a high kick. It's getting down towards the Australian 22. Gary Jack fumbles it, then has to recover, and he's coming out from his own 10-metre line towards the quarter comes to Freeman, he's pulled down by Freeman and coming over the top, locked forward Horro. Barrows the dummy hunt. This is O'Connor. Mike O'Connor running across the ground, in fact he's lost ground. He must have lost about five metres, tackled by Tony Eero, the elder brother of the centre. And now it's McGaw. Yes. And that pass from Elias has gone forward. There's no question about that. And the referee is ruling the knock on rather than the, the forward pass. And the scrum will go down right in the centre of the field, about 20 metres out from the Australian uprights. Here's a penalty going to New Zealand. 
and he's got uh, Benny Elias for packing into the scrum incorrectly so it's a differential penalty and uh, the Kiwis who've uh, got as I said uh, a tremendous problem on their hands here down 25 points to nil sure they've got the breeze at their backs but uh, I doubt that this Australian side is going to let them back into the game as Brown kicks the ball backwards to find touch. Well, they never had a plan for that occasion. They're on the 25, he certainly a new here. He's given them a back a good 10 then and pen penalised Australia. Tap taken by Freeman. Uh, the New Zealander was knocked over in back play as Brown got the ball away to Freeman. And it looks like any organization in that play has gone out of their minds because they just didn't seem to know where the next play was supposed to go this is Shelford who's put down 10 meters out from the line jointly tackled by Dunn and Roach and the sound of our new whistle he's having a talk to Roach that is a juvenile penalty by Roach juvenile he's, penalty. he set him off I think Jack he's given him 10 he's gone it was well, that was an elbow as uh, a Shelford was down. Watch this because you'll see, Roach, he's had one there. And when Shelford hits the ground, watch this. Now they missed the shot there on the replay. Maybe it'll come up here. Here it is again. Shelford is the New Zealander tackled. Dunn is underneath. And uh, Langer, I believe, is also there. Now here comes Roach down over the top. The elbow goes across the the cheekbone and the forehead of Shelford and Roach has gone for 10 minutes. Well, there's plenty of booing going on here, but yeah. Sorensen thumps his way four or five. A 31-point margin, the biggest ever by Australia in Brisbane, 1978. But here's a little break now from Freeman as he goes downfield, gets it on the mark. Graham McGraw takes him though from behind with some good defence for the Kiwis with a bit of a roll now. Can they go on with this and get some points on the board as Brown? Links up out wide, he gets it to uh, Iro. Kevin Iro. Mercer. Back for Bell, there's a kick across field taken by McGaw. That was a poor kick, it went straight to McGaw. He's centre field, still in Australia's half. New Zealand's biggest margin by 24 points was uh, a 49 to 25 victory in Brisbane in 1952. So Australia on the way to a record if they can build on the score they have now 25 to 2. Still plenty going on the ball goes loose. Gary Jack picks it up but the referee says no we'll have a scrum. Centre field just in uh, New Zealand's end of the ground. Kurt Sorensen looking a little despondent but uh, Oh, gee, there's been some tough stuff from him this afternoon. Right, Freeman now gets it on to Hero again. Hasn't been allowed much room to move by the Australians, this fellow. Well, he thumps the ball down, but Jack, they're making silly mistakes. Well, they've got to push the play. Security is certainly not part of their game anymore. They've got to push the last pass. They've got to find it up, play a little quicker. They've got to hope for a kick. They're going to hope. <laughs> they probably got no hope. Wally Lewis looking on. Scrums, Australia four, New Zealand five. So pretty evenly matched there. Having a lot of tr trouble with the scrums too. Penalty has gone to Australia. 8-11 the scrums. Australia's way. Uh, penalties, I mean, Australia's way. Baranow takes the kick for touch. Right on the 22 line. So Australia now with another chance. Elias. On to Langer. Out for Lamb. Quickly on to Farry. Can't handle it though. Scramble for possession. And that's wasted possession by Australia because uh, the Kiwis have the ball now. But again, players pulled up in the playing of the football. Brown. Kicks for touch. Drives the ball down. So now the Kiwis have some territory. And we see him put a try on. Shelford. Australia's been waved back again. Well, the Kiwis have just pinched about 60 metres here on the run. But hardly putting a pass in as Mark Graham now throws it out to Shelford. Shelford with a stupid loose pass. Australia handle. They dive on it. Scrappy play all over the place. Langer puts his hands on his head, but the Kiwis have got a penalty. 
I think Mr. I knew he's getting a little travel sick or something, but he's coming up with decisions that are pretty hard to work out. This crowd, I've never seen a bigger crowd so quiet. But then again, they keep, they want to clap and then they look at the scoreboard and it stops them. Brown now ready for the kick. Well, Mick Cronin, this game was played so well in the first half, but uh, by gee, both teams having some handling problems. They are having some handling problems. I just wonder whether New Zealand's got enough time to kick 11 more goals. At 11-0, they wouldn't take a shot at goal in the first half. Now at the score of 25-0, they've had two shots at penalty goal. I think there's been 22 penalties awarded. I can believe that. I think there might be a few more awarded before the day's out. Comments from a man that uh, carried the colours for Australia so proudly, Mick Cronin. Peter Brown, the Kiwi kicker. Up it goes. This time he gets the flags up again. So 25 points to four. Australia now lead New Zealand in this World Cup decider. Well, the decisions by the New Zealanders in regards to taking easy shots at goal from penalties are a little bit hard to follow. I can recall at 11-0 they had two opportunities given to them and you could have thrown it over. And then they've uh, had a sequence of penalties just in that passage which Darrell was describing to you. And again, they, they opted not to kick and then finally they come up with the decision to take the two points. So there's a lot of indecision out there and it could be they're lacking in leadership from Dean Bell at the moment. As we find Mercer now taking the play more towards the centre of the ground and he's injured a leg. He's obviously uh, had a clash there with Paul Dunn. Dunn came up clutching his head. Mercer's clutching at his left knee as Brown is tackled by Surinam, play in the centre of the ground on the 22 and Graham runs hard and strong and steps free from Gavin Miller's tackle, reaches the halfway. Good run by Mark Graham. As the ball goes to the right, the run around between Friend and Bell and then a long pass and Tony Eero puts it down. As Jack Gibson so rightly pointed out, when you're behind by this, uh, this margin, you've got to push the passes, you've got to take the chances. But that was right down Tony Eero's throat. And uh, he put it down the simplest of catches. The New Zealand hooker just refuses to pack into the scrum legal, but that scrum was won by Australia and our newly allowed play to go. McGaw will come up with the football, held down for a moment or two by Freeman, which again is rather stupid. He wants the Australians on their feet and playing football because the clock is working for Australia, not for New Zealand. And this is Jack who's going to play the ball now. About seven or eight metres his side of the halfway. Paul Dunn goes ahead. Reaching the halfway almost. Tackler was Brown. To the blind side from Elias. It's with Sirenan and a blockbusting run by Sirenan to O'Connor to Jack Langer. Oh, I was about to say that Langer was going for the treble. And he put it down. And a scrum will form about 18 metres out from the New Zealand line. What a memorable match. It will be for Alan Langer, but how much more memorable it would have been with a trifecta of tries, Jack Gibson. Well, the simplest part of the game eluded him. Maybe Just went to ground. If he was home, he would have put that ball where every fancy. Maybe the pass from Jack was a little bit low, but it's a bit hard passing to Alan Langer. He's not built very high. As New Zealand win the scrum, the run around is on as Horro worked uh, from the scrum with the 5'8 Freeman. And he gets up and plays it. Across the ground, Mercer from dummy half, popping it up to Bell as uh, Blocker Roach comes back onto the park. I must admit I was confused by the signal given by the, the referee at the time of the Roach incident, but 10 minutes in the bin, as Bell cuts out the Australians, Farrah does well to cover, Eero is the man with the football, and eventually Dunn goes in. No hanky-panky from the Canterbury prop when he puts him down. Freeman run around with Bell and now it's uh, Sorensen straight ahead he gave the ball back to Benny Elias Elias can't handle it came off the boot of a Kiwi and then Lamb tried to recover as uh, New Zealand send a replacement into the game at Shane Cooper number 14 and it looks to me as though the fullback will come off well Gary Mercer has had a sad day here at Eden Park with rugby leagues what is it 72 years or something since they played league here and Mercer has missed three Australian attackers and it's been a sorry and very forgetful day for him as Australia gets a differential penalty from the scrum. Shane Cooper on, Freeman will go back to full back in number six. Friend will continue to work the scrums and Cooper will go to standoff or 5-8. Well Mercer's clutching at his ribcage 
Uh, it may be that he's injured. Maybe I've been a little bit harsh on him, but he has had a terrible game. Now, he had a collision with Dunn five, six minutes back. Now, I was under the impression that differential penalty had been given as we find uh, Mercer going back up the tunnel. It could have been a foul play penalty from the scrum. I must admit that I thought it was just a straight up and down differential, but O'Connor's kicking for goal. 30 metres out right in front. Well, all I can deduce is the penalty was given for foul play from the scrum. If that be the case, it's not a differential penalty. That's fine, I accept that. But here's O'Connor now from right in front and 30 metres out. It's gone wide. And uh, no further addition to that scoreboard, Australia continues to lead in the World Cup Final, the 4X World Cup Final, Australia 25, New Zealand 4. The Kiwis now take the ball away from the 22. Sirena, though, picks it up. He gives it to his Balmain teammate, Gary Jack. He brings it back toward the halfway line. In fact, tackled almost on the halfway line. Gary Jack, Horro the tackler, comes on to Roach. Roach uh, shows the ball, but uh, has lost it. And Mr. Anui says we'll have a scrum. Shane Cooper, the new player on, was the man that came up with the ball for New Zealand. This scrum the pack pretty well on the halfway line. There's a bit going on too as you look down from where we sit here at Eden Park. Cooper gets it on to Eero. Eero, very quiet by Dewey. We saw him score a great try for the rest of the world against Australia at the Sydney Football Stadium. But he's been quiet tonight. He's his brother though. He winds up, been pretty involved in the first half, Tony Euro. Brown takes it up, he swings one back for, uh, for Coop, no, Wallace it was. This is Shelford, Shelford just throws the ball wildly in the air, and it's plucked out of the air by the Australians, Mark McGaw, the man that has the football. Benny Elias, dummy half, looking for runners, it's Gavin Miller he finds. No, it was Wayne Pearce. Wayne Pierce, now it comes out to Langer, on to Lamb. Lamb gets it back to Pierce this time. Pierce running across the field, trying to link up with the uh, the wingers, but can't. Playing it back now, Gavin Miller goes on to McGaw. 18 minutes of this match remaining, as it comes back to Benny Elias at dummy half. He kicks for the touchline, and will he find it? The ball rolling, it looks like a great kick. Yes, it is. A oh, great kick from Benny Elias. He just had a look. No one there. Freeman was centre field, so he drove the ball down. And he's found the line about 15 metres out from the Kiwi line. So deep now in the 22, Australia. Mr. Nui having trouble with the scrums. Moves to the front. I think he's getting a little tired, Mr. Arno. He can eat, produce a panel any time. He just pulled that one out of the air, didn't he? Yeah, he, he thought one out. Hardly had time to pack that scrum, but anyway, the Kiwis have driven the ball now down to Australia's half. The score, 25 points to four. Australia leading. Shelford now. Shelford hard and fast, but in they come. When he touches, in comes the defence. Wallace on to Brown. Brown winds up. Brown still going. Brown, if he can get it away to Horro, he does. But no, he doesn't. Horro was the, uh, the foil. He ran through. Now Graham gets it back to Friend. Out to Sorensen, over top to Iro. Iro trying to uh, link up with his brother, but can't. Brother moves into dummy half. Tony Iro comes out to Dean Bell. Dean Bell dummies around, spins, pivots, dances, but gets thumped down for his trouble. Kiwi's nice and deep for Friend now. Friend darting around, looking for a gap. Flicks one out, taken by Brown. He's on standing still, though. Going nowhere. Tackled on the 22. Cooper, out for Freeman. Freeman on to Sorensen. Sorensen up the middle if he can link up, but he can't. Change over possession this time. It was a great tackle by Pierce. I think he's come up with the football too. And there might be an injury there. Gavin Miller will play the ball. Well, Miller done the shot. Gavin comes up with the ball. Both players... Uh, very similar from the height of the headbands and whatever. But anyway, play now to the 22. Australia with the ball. And Australia with the score. 25 to 4 they lead. Paul Dunn. 
takes the set one. Langer pointing out wide. Takes the ball now to Little Man. He gets it on to Sirenen. Sirenen out of one. Winds up. They belt him down this time, though. Benny Elias looking to Terry Lamb. Will he go that way? No, he doesn't. And there's some pretty hard and high stuff still going on. One high, one low, and plenty of swinging arms. Elias. Elias from dummy half puts the ball in the air, but it's out on the full. He waved back. So Benny looking to create some play, but just kicked it to too high, too hard. And the scrum will pack. Still in Australia's half. Kiwi ball. Cooper. Peyton, friend of dummy half, looking to Dean Bell. Gets it to Bell now. Bell winds up, tries to do the step, but uh, no go. Miller's around his legs. International numbers today, we remind you. And, of course, this is the way that we'll see the premiership numbers in the future in Australia. And I guess it's about time we fell into line with the rest of the world. Sorensen, friend. Cooper, back to friend. Out wide for Iro. He takes it on the first bounce. Again, he's wrapped up quickly, though. Barrow was the tackler that time. It's getting quite dark here now at Eaton Park. Still no rain, though. Very overcast. Gusty nor'east wind. And pretty cool. Torrential rain here earlier through the week on the ground in magnificent condition. It dried out well. Shearer takes the kick and gets under a high one. They come back and get him and wrap him up. Mark McGaw gets it out to Gary Jack. Well, the Australians are just playing out the time now, Ray Warren. There's, there's no doubt, Darrell, that they, if you like, change back a gear and they're just going to freewheel home from here. They're uh, certainly slowing the game down to suit themselves. As Sorensen, uh, Sirenen, I should say, has held 32 metres out from his own line. He's had a very strong game, Paul Sirenen. He's been uh, one of the better forwards on the on the park as Roach goes to within 10 metres of the halfway now. Down by forward Shelford. And Elias it is who works it to the right. For Gavin Miller, who's been very busy very busy Miller in fact he's probably the man that I'd be voting for if there was a man of the match vote to be awarded Iro makes a break for the Kiwis he's going to go all the way yes it's a try for Kevin Iro well he's a very talented player and I was about to make the comment that uh, Farah and McGaw had done a good job on containing the New Zealand centres, particularly Kevin Eero. And all of a sudden, he was into open space. He got inside Sirenen, done chased. Then Jack came on the scene late. But uh, Eero is in to score, wide out, the first New Zealand try. 25 points to eight. Well, he received this ball from Friend. He got a little space to move. And from then on, he just beat Jack on pace. He's got plenty of it. He's got speed to burn, and he's a big lump of a centre. And there he is on another... Uh, another from Brown is unsuccessful. So 25 points to eight, Australia leading New Zealand in the 4X World Cup final. They're leading 25 to eight, and here's Lamb with the grubber kick in behind the defence, and the Australian player was pulled down in pursuit of the ball. The referee said, play on. Well, that's a pretty hard decision to follow. Michael O'Connor has now had something to say to Arnui, but the referee has given a penalty against Terry Lamb's tackle on the New Zealander. And so the Kiwis with the penalty 10 metres out from their line, Brown, the front rower, takes that penalty. As number 15 comes on for the, the home side, Sam Stewart coming on. Shelford is tackled. They're 32 metres out from their own line. Ten minutes of time remaining, and again they've made that elementary error. 25 to 8 then in favour of Australia. Well, we got 14 on the football paddock, on not Still waiting for a player to come off at shelf, but it's going to come off, Jack. And there's a dust up on the scrum, it's on now again. Sorensen again involved. Mark Graham is in there. And that man, Mr Roach. Been a dog fight in those scrums all afternoon. Wayne Shelford coming off and shakes the head. Sorensen and Blocker coming up. A little claret on uh, Sorensen's lip. 
Mr. Anui laying down the law and saying, any more and you're off. Making no bones of Andrew Farah standing up and uh, that's when they've been coming in and swinging some arms and again, Clayton Friend being involved with Farah. There's a bit of push and shove. They finally break up. It's a rolling match in the centre and the game has fallen away in the last 10 or 15 minutes but Dunn takes it up for Australia. Hard, fast and strong. Makes four or five. Benny Elias gets it out to Lamb. Lamb to Farah. Farah dancing around, but the defence too strong. He can't beat it. Dale Shearer takes on the rollers and dummy half. Goes to Elias. Elias chipping for the corner. The chasers are coming through. O'Connor following it up and uh, Ball just beats him. Just beats him. But what has Mr. Anui done here? 25 tap, he's got it out. Well, the signal's going all over the field here from the Australians and the New Zealanders. And Sammy Stewart brings it up for the Kiwis, his first major run of this game. And there's plenty of heavy stuff still going on in Brown, and he goes down. Wallace gets it on to Friend, out to Cooper. Now on to Dean Bell. Freeman over ran it, though. Ball goes loose, Australia have it. Michael O'Connor will play it. Steve Roach is off. And Gillespie is on for Australia. Australia with the ball midway between the half and the quarter. Benny Elias. Flicks it round now for Gary Jack. Gary Jack goes three or four. Stands up. Now they get him down. Back to Elias. On to Langer. Langer gets it out to Miller. Miller with a little break. Miller inside the 22. Couldn't link up though, Miller. Gillespie dummy half. Now Benny Elias moves in, says my job. Langer, Langer, flicking one around. He gets it back to Lamb. Lamb turns it back inside to Shearer. Too much defence though for Shearer. They've lost the ball. The Kiwis have it. And again, there's a punch up on. And it's really on. They all come in now. Trying to break it up, it's Freeman and Shearer throwing punches here. Well, it might be cold outside where we are up high, but let me tell you, it's hot down there on the field. Well, feet for uh, the Kiwis. Out to Ilya. Ilya out of one, they come back and get him though. Shearer and Lamb, the defenders for Australia. On to Cooper. Cooper. Flicks one out over to Wallace. Wallace standing still. No one to give it to. He had to take the tackle. Just outside the 22. This scuffle's going on all over the back play. Now they come back and start to play some football. Mark Graham takes it forward four or five. They're out of the danger zone, but they need to get into Australia's half and do it quickly. And they won't do it the way they've been playing. On to Cooper. Long cutout pass to Sorensen. Watch this boy get some attention. He loses the football. Friend has to clean it up. Now he comes back, looking for a hole. Nothing there but green and gold jumpers, though. On for Wallace. Sam Stewart. And they're back where they started from now. Friend. On to Cooper. Cooper gets out of one. The ball goes back to Clayton Friend. It's pedestrian stuff at the moment. Too much defence, though. Now they flick it off the ground. It goes on to Iro. Iro starts to wind up. He's got his brother. His brother can't take the ball. And I'd say that's about the third or the fourth one that he's put down. Four balls he's put down, this fellow, today. Well, if he caught that ball, he'd been in a circus. Well, I was about to say they weren't easy, most of them, but still. OK, we're into the last five minutes. Ray Warren. And 25 points to eight in favour of Australia. And a lot of people, as I said earlier in the commentary, were telling us that there was no way we could beat New Zealand here this afternoon. And uh, they had plenty of, uh, plenty of fun, let me say, with some of the jokes they've been firing at the Australian contingent during the week. But uh, that old saying is, he who laughs last, laughs loudest. And I'm pretty sure those 13 representatives, 15 now for Australia, will be laughing long and loud when the full-time siren sounds here at Eden Park this afternoon. Sam Stewart is tackled just inside the Australian 22. And it's away to Brown, the front row forward. Well, this referee hasn't done anything, any harm down here. They've landed a long white cloud. The penalties are 17-9 in favour of New Zealand. 
some stupid spiteful things going on out there far too many really to describe as we find Freeman running across the park many of his teammates have done that today Iro is looking for the opening to cross the 22 but it is firmly shut in his face by Paul Dunn as it goes to the right from Wallace to Graham in 11 he's inside the quarter with a nice little step and he picks up Elia this is Tony Eero Eero coming back inside the ground uh, infield and getting it to Cooper now Cooper's run backwards 10 meters Brown lofts the ball over the top that's Horro the lock with the ball McGaw goes across and makes the tackle both he and Farrah have been strong in defense today They've uh, let a couple of little breaks go, but for the most part, they've been strong. Sorensen gets the pass to Cooper, but Cooper drops the ball with the line open. Knock-on will be ordered, and a scrum will pack about eight metres away from the Australian line. Three minutes of time remaining now. We've got three minutes to score 17 points. It's just about out of reach, there. Langer to work the scrum. Scored two tries, he had the chance for three. New Zealand win the scrum against the feed. And Bell it is who's tackled on the blind side of play. Dean Bell, the New Zealand captain, as a friend works the ball off to Sam Stewart. And Stewart will play it three metres away from the Australian line. The dying seconds of this game, Australia's come up with the football. But Arnui has given a penalty. A penalty going to the home side. I was only thinking, watching some of the, the passes and some of the plays that Cooper has been involved in since he's been on the field, Jack, uh, it seems a, a bit of a tragedy that he wasn't there in the first place because the, the two halves they've chosen certainly uh, didn't have a great deal of discipline, would be a, a mild way of putting it. Well, I agree with you there. I think he's done a lot of harm to that side Freeman for his discipline. He, he, it just ricocheted through the place. And Chance Australia here. scored the points. Chance here. The Eros work it out wide and Tony Eero goes in to score. Well, he's had several opportunities outside his brother to catch and run, but he's been unable to do that. He's put plenty of ball on the ground. He's the elder of the two brothers. That time he was able to catch the pass. It was a simple backline play. There was one decoy runner and then it was Dean Bell who held it up before giving it to Kevin Eero, then to his brother, a one-handed put-down. The ball game well and truly over, 25 points to 12 in favour of Australia. Yeah, the 30, 37 points have been scored, and I think 31 of them come from the, what end is that, Ray? Is that the south, the north, the east? Well, this ground, I think you'll find, is running east-west, Jack. That's the northern stand opposite, and the breeze is coming from the northeastern corner, so they're running, actually, well, from east to west. Point. But, yes, that, that has certainly been the... The end of the park where the points have come from, 37 of them, as Jack Gibson rightly points out. And here's Brown from uh, an acute angle, uh, well outside the 22. The kick has just gone wide. So back to the halfway for the restart. Australia leading by 13 points. Terry Lamb coming on to replace Wally Lewis just prior to halftime repeating the news about Lewis it seems almost certain that he's got a fracture and in fact there he is on camera about to light up a cigarette but it seems certain that he's got a fractured uh, lower right forearm as Lamb gets us going again and it's come from Freeman this is Elia going across the ground good to see David Gillespie in green and gold this is his first green and gold jumper and uh, Don Ferner opting to give him a run late in the match as the ball goes loose, it's picked up by Eero, the man who set up that previous try out wide for his brother. This is Kevin. The ball goes over the shoulder of Sorensen. Again, there's some uh, fighting going on in the back play between Farah and Eero. As uh, the referee Arnui lets play go on, it's with Bell now. He gets the pass over to Graham, a shoulder charge from McGaw. And Graham will be asked to play the ball 15 metres out from his own line. A penalty goes to New Zealand against the Australians. And Brown comes in, picks up the ball to take a, a quick kick for line. The tap to be taken right on the halfway mark. Only a matter of 15 seconds remaining in this match. And Australia tying it up in the first half. They took advantage of the lack of discipline from the New Zealanders. They wanted to fight. They didn't want to play football. And they'd lost this, uh, this ball game midway through the first half. 
as the siren sounds, children flocking onto the ground. Cooper flicks a pass out the back to Sorensen. I think these players will have to shut it down, surely, because children are everywhere on Eden Park at the moment. And that's the end of the section, the sound of the referee's whistle. And Australia are the World Cup holders at the end of the, uh, of the 80 minutes with a decisive scoreline of 25 points to 12. Langer, well, he scored a couple of tries. A very happy Wally Lewis. The Australians, I guess, through all the publicity that they've been reading here during the week, and certainly none of it very favourable about them, have been inspired by that pro-New Zealand uh, publicity. And uh, they've struck back at their critics and struck back very, very strongly. Their first half, of course, was machine-like. The second half, I guess they were conserving as much energy as they possibly could. They were on the downhill to gather some of the personalities from this game. And I can see that Wayne Pierce is walking towards camera and possibly he's walking... Disappointed their performance? Well, I thought in the second half we were a little bit sloppy. We, uh, we didn't control the ball as well as we should have. But overall, I think it was a pretty good performance considering that some of the guys hadn't played for seven or eight weeks. When you consider how much black this side of yours has copped this week in Auckland, it's a sweet victory. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've been copped a little bit of bashing in the media, but, but still I suppose there's the rivalry between Australia and New Zealand. And when, when it results in a crowd that we've got here, then I think it's good for the game whether or not we've been bashed or not. <laughs> what about the refereeing decisions, Abby? Yeah, I thought he was, he was a, an outstanding referee. Yeah. He was in full marks, that's for sure. OK, well, thanks, mate, and congratulations on another great game. You always do it. New Zealand, David Longy giving it to Wally Lewis and it's a proud Wally Lewis with that arm very heavily bandaged and that's the...